the main mythic role of Shu and Tefnu is to create the earth and sky, whom a coffin text says were made, once again, from the efflux of their members. Now, the title of Geb refers literally to the earth. Geb meaning earth, including earth that lies below the waters of the Nile River, the alluvial rises of the river. While the name of Geb's sister and consort, Nut, means literally sky or heavens. Her physical form is represented invariably as a personified sky goddess, whose overarching body creates space for the movement of the sun and stars. The figure that stands between Geb and Nu is a fully personified aspect of Shu, who separates and supports, quote unquote, the earth and sky. Geb and Nut are less nebulous in their mythic roles, for they are needed to provide a home for creatures in the Nilotic fields of Ra. To quote Coffin Text 510, the earth opens its mouth for you. Geb throws open his jaws on your account, and I will raise up Horus preeminent in pay onto his lotus flowers. So the earth and sky make room for the sun and stars, as well as the sacred lotus. Even though the goddess Nut is somewhat immaterial, she is identified, nonetheless, as one of the many parts, members, or offshoots, if you will, of the solar creatrix, Ra, whom the papyrus of Nu, as we recall, describes as such. I am Ra. My hips and legs are the hips and legs of Nut. There is no member of my body which is not the member of some god. Reference to the legs and hips of Nut are relevant here, since the sky goddess gives birth to the sun on a daily basis between her legs. And at the end of the day, Nut swallows the sun as a starry night sky, as can be observed in the temples of Dendera. A ceiling mural of Nut in the tomb of Ramses VI across the river from Thebes depicts her mythic form in more exacting detail. We observe here not one, but two parallel trajectories of this golden disk one of which follows the course of her starry body after it descends from her birth canal, while another disc is offloaded onto the sunboat of Kepra for its daily voyage across the Nile River. So the solar disc follows two paths, one across high skies of Egypt and another across the waters of creation. Note here that the solar orb moves solitarily, while the solar boat includes members of the Aeneid as passengers. On the opposite end of the burial chamber of Ramses VI, the nilotic disc is delivered to Nut's mouth, where the orb is swallowed by the goddess, so as to begin its migration through her star-studded body toward the hips and legs, quote-unquote for yet another birth of the disk. Although most Egyptologists consider the solar barge motif as a symbol of the aerial sun, an alternative interpretation, which would be my own, would justifiably recognize two distinctive natural processes here. One relating to the sun's daily movements through the sky and another relating to an aquatic disc, which would represent the lotus blossom's golden disc on its boat of the rising sun, which is born from the waters of the Nile, as is Nefertum, a.k.a. Kepra. For we might recall the inscription at Dendra that we quote in our episode on Fields of Ra that describes horses solar barge as just this flower. And I quote, the sun, which exists 
since the beginning, rises like a falcon out of the center of the lotus blossom. When the doors of the petals open in the shine of sapphire, so he, Horse Ra, has separated the night from the day. You are rising like the holy serpent, as a living spirit. Creating, you rise and shine in your magnificent body, in the boat of the rising sun. The divine boat and sun referring here clearly to the blue lotus. Ultimately, Geb and Nut, the earth and sky, enjoy a coupling that produces the largest generation of the Enyid. This family comprises four offspring, the great-grandchildren of the self-created lotus god Nefertum, namely Osiris, Seth, Isis, and Nephthys, observed here on the bow of Horus's sun barge. This larger generation behaves differently than their predecessors, insofar as they introduce the process of death on the River Nile, but not without their own creative activities. Death results from a sibling rivalry that arises between two brothers, Osiris and Seth, whose refusal to share the throne of the aquatic underworld results in the murder of one of these brothers, and that would be Osiris. The conflict is not without a positive outcome, however, because a magical act of necromancy by the sister consort of Osiris, and that would be Isis, brings natural order, Mat, back to the world in the form of cycles between life and death on the banks of the Nile. 